Tennessee Titans quarterback Ryan Tannehill went down with an ankle injury today, which required him to be carted off the field. When asked about it after the game, we saw that Tannehill was actually walking around on crutches, and he said that he is scheduled to have an MRI. As of right now, sources have not been very specific as to what exactly is going on at the ankle, but the mechanism of injury seems to be very consistent with what we would see with something called a high ankle sprain. So with this video today, I wanna to go over the relevant anatomy for this particular injury, and I wanna go over the differences between a high ankle sprain and what we consider a regular ankle sprain. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallo, and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. And with my channel, I take a look at sports injuries, and I explain them so that they're a little bit easier to understand. I also go over the relevant anatomy of that injury and talk about what that person should expect when they come for rehab. If you like this content and you wanna see more of it, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more of these videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. Now we see right here on the play that Tannehill is injured on, we see that as he's being sacked, that right foot seems to get trapped underneath and he's getting what looks like an external rotation force going through the ankle. Here I have a model of the foot and ankle, and so the ankle joint is comprised of two long bones which are going to come down and form either side of the ankle. The first one being this tibia or shin bone is going to come on down and form that inside portion, also known as the medial malleolus. Then as we look on the outside portion of the model here, we have the fibula bone, which is going to come down and form the outside portion known as the lateral malleolus. And then as we look on the inside portion here, we have the talus bone, which is going to form the bottom portion of the ankle. Now let's go over the ligaments that are essentially important for overall ankle stability. They are the anterior talofibular ligament, which is located right in through here, or the ATFL for short. Then we have the calcaneofibular ligament, which is located here. And finally, we have the posterior talofibular ligament located right here. All three of these are located on the outside portion and they're going to contribute to lateral stability of the ankle. As we flip the model towards the inside here, there are some other ligaments that Essentially, as a group, we call them the deltoid ligament. This is going to contribute for essentially medial stability of the ankle. Then as we go slightly above the ankle, there are two ligaments that we call the high ankle ligaments because essentially they are not directly at the ankle joint, but they're slightly above it. On the front portion here, we have the anterior tibiofibular ligament. So anterior meaning it's on the front portion tibiofibular because it's going to attach the tibia and fibula together. Then as we flip the model towards the back here, there is a posterior tibiofibular ligament. So posterior meaning it's on the back portion of the model here. And tibiofibular, once again, it's attaching the tibia and fibula together. Now, essentially the function of both of these ligaments is to prevent any sort of separation from the tibia and the fibula. Usually the ligaments that are located on the lateral portion of the ankle are injured in what we call an inversion ankle sprain where the foot is coming in like so. The deltoid ligament is injured in the motion where the foot is going into eversion. We call that an eversion ankle sprain. And finally, anytime those higher up ankle ligaments are going to be implicated, it's any sort of rotational mechanism where that foot is going to go into an external rotation position. And that's what we see in this video. It looks like as he's being sacked and pulled to the ground, that foot is an external rotation. And as I do that on the model here, you see that the fibula and tibia actually separate a little bit. So anytime this is going to occur, it's going to affect either that ligament on the front or the back, or it could potentially affect both. Now for Tannehill specifically, this is something that we absolutely don't wanna see because if you remember last December, he actually had surgery for a similar injury and this was called a tightrope surgery. Basically, this is sort of a fixation that's put into this area of the lower leg to essentially provide stability for both of those ligaments. So this is a similar mechanism to something he had surgery for in the past. So given his surgical history, this is definitely alarming for him. Now for a typical high ankle sprain, essentially there is a grading system of grades one, two, and three. In a grade one, this is where you're getting stretching of one of those or both of those affected ligaments. In a grade two, you're getting partial tearing. And finally, in a grade three, this is where you get a full rupture. Now there is a quick on the field or in the office test we can do to essentially rule in if we think someone is dealing with a high ankle sprain. And essentially what we're doing is we're going to have them seated with the leg bent and we're going to put their foot in our hand like so, and we're providing that external rotation mechanism. And as, as I do that on the model, once again, you can kind of see those two bones separate from each other, but 
If this is reproducing pain or we feel any sort of instability, then this makes us believe that what the person is dealing with is a high ankle sprain. Gold standard for that, of course, is the MRI, and that's going to tell us the grade. So he's already scheduled to have that when they return home. So we'll wait for the result of that to basically see how long he's going to be out. Now let's talk about time frame for a person to come back to sport if they have a high ankle sprain. Typically what we'll see is we'll see about four to six weeks, and this is going to depend on the severity. With Tannehill's surgical history, this could complicate things a little bit. So I'm gonna essentially need to wait and see what they say regarding him and his prior surgeries to determine an accurate timetable for him to return. Anytime we're dealing with a grade two or a grade three high ankle sprain injury, essentially with this, this could require surgical intervention because a lot of times there is some instability at that portion of the lower leg. So for Tannehill, we hope that it's going to be one of those grade one high ankle sprains where he can return in a number of weeks. But if I happen to hear any updates regarding his MRI, which he's due to have, I'll be sure to update everybody in the comment section. So thank you for tuning in and watching my video today. If you enjoy this sort of content, I'm going to go ahead and link a playlist of mine so that you can watch some more videos. Thank you again for tuning in and I'll see you next time.